Welcome to episode 175, Chinese Musical Chairs. That's right, Chinese Musical Chairs. We're going to look at one of the biggest, probably, crime syndicate heist in the world. Now, for a lot of you guys, you've tuned in because you were expecting the Wise Guy series The last one that we had for, we went on the marathon of Wise Guy series since I believe uh, end of October. And uh, well, last one was the Zips, but we're going to throw that one into 2021 because um, we got to get on with uh, the rest of the podcast. But uh, the the series, uh, the Wise Guy series did very well, so. How do you get in contact with us? Well, it's easy, RaiderCop.com or RaiderCopNation.com. RaiderCopNation.com is our official website where you can also tune in to test everything 1521 and catch the latest updates. The endless political election is still going on. The robbery, the non-robbery, you have evidence, you don't have evidence. It's it's getting sickening already, but you got to keep on fighting for what you believe in. And the stimulus check, $2,000. No, we got the finger 600 And now, uh, well, not everybody's going to get to 600 because if you made more than uh, $100,000 a year, well, you ain't going to get anything. So basically what the, all that means, tighten your chin straps. It's going to be a rough tough new administration and the beginning of communism. For now, let's concentrate on the word of the week. From the book of Titus, chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saves us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. You can hear more about what I've read. This is going to be a series, as I said before, it's going to be Three episodes will deal with this, um, uh, Titus chapter 3. And uh, you can hear more of this at Test Everything 1521. And that's on RaiderCopNation.com or Apple Apple Podcast, uh, everything that's out there. All right, we got a lot to talk about. And we are going to talk about the biggest theft in world history. On episode 175, Sound the Cannon, Chinese Musical Chairs. Following the great crash, housing crash of 2008, everybody in their greedy little self were looking for the next big thing. And the next big thing would come in the form of hedge funds. Hedge funds would be the gangster in trading. Basically, 
a lot of short selling. And that is the investor basically makes a profit after what he's been pitching falls and hits the ground. The investor sells because he brought at a better rate making the profit. Sooner or later, the perfect storm would take effect on these little hedge funds and their short selling because there was a big, big wheeler and dealer watching what they were doing and liked what they were doing. And that big dealer was China. And they would create the perfect storm. The companies that can supply China with that platform are going to make a lot of money. They want that hedge fund and those short sellings of stocks. They like it and they're going to corrupt the American market to get what they want. Financial reports, not a problem. Or financial statements. Why? Because those financial companies that make those statements for these companies that are going to be soon to appear, they don't really write the statements. The company does. All they do is do the phony brochure to get the suckers. Well, after you know it, you blink twice and it was welcome to Wall Street. Then uh, there they are on the big market. But here's the problem. China cannot really sell stocks on the American exchange. Oh my gosh, what to do? Never you mind. Greedy American hedge funds, stock, stock people are right around the corner to help you figure this out. They would convert a bunch of defunct American companies and sell them to China. These American companies were already on the stock market. They were down to pennies on pennies. Not even a dollar. They were they were almost a figment of everybody's imagination, but they were there. China would eventually end up buying or getting or acquiring whatever uh, title you want to give it, 400 companies. All of them, again, on the stock market. The system was basically would be created that not one person or one entity could really see the higher picture of the theft because you see the guy that did the financial report that's all he got paid for and he was happy and he's out the hedge fund guy raised money and made money and he never really saw the suckers at the end he just saw the investors in the en- entry and everybody in the short seller same thing really didn't care about who was if there was a victim Everybody here was in their own little world and nobody would really pay attention to the whole scheme. But eventually, some people could see it. The system would go on, but the problem was, and and it continues to be, that Americans believe that everything's on the up and up. Well, obviously, if they're trading on the American Stock Exchange, I mean, we have laws, we're protected. Not fully vetting who these companies are. Yes, they were American companies. But these financial reports that they were sending out were a little wishy-washy, let's say. But it didn't matter because they weren't writing it. Remember, the companies were writing it. So, 
the financial report is we're doing the brochure. Everything so far is so good. As we said, China would acquire a lot of these companies and then we would bring in auditing firms. They had to order the books. But a lot of the books that they were ordering were all legit to a certain extent. You see, the Chinese government would wheel and deal the, the, these small little American companies. They would buy and defunct pennies on the dollar. Then they would transfer these huge amounts of money over to get the company started, but it was only for the brochure. That's all it was for. And then they would sell something or do something, like print paper or uh, whatever commodity that they were supposedly selling. And a lot of these investors were buying this stuff, not even knowing what the factory looked like. You see, it's not against the law in China to defraud a non-Chinese company. So the Chinese quickly learned, because they're a part of the the caper here, that they're stealing money. The, this huge amounts of money are transferring in and out of the country. They also know Chinese companies are keeping the money, but that's not against the law in China. And... Americans are out to lunch because of greed, not really paying attention to the theft. And they are trading legitimately on the stock market. Well, law enforcement wouldn't really figure this out. There's only so much your reach could could go up until they got to China. And then the connection was dropped let's say no way to investigate no way to find out the truth but why would Americans trade with foreign companies in China putting up their life savings in some cases could it be just pure unadulterated greed I would say so But it's not just a regular American that was putting up their entire life savings. There was a lot of people trying to jump on the next best thing right after the market crashed. So there's a lot of people, including pension funds, that now want to make up for that lost gap after the housing market dropped. They got hit pretty hard and they wanted to make it up, so they turned to Wall Street. Scary, isn't it? You turn to Wall Street. It's like tur- it's like turning to an undertaker and telling him you got any health tips. So when people started going around asking questions and didn't really like what was going on, the reports looked good. The order said everything looks pretty good. But I'm not feeling this. It's a Chinese company. Some Americans would be brave enough to get on a plane, go to China and see what the factory would look like. And boy, were they were surprised when they saw absolutely nothing. So when people started asking questions, well, these American companies, of course, they were Chinese influence would hire lawyers. The lawyer, the lawyers would make people go away. They were like professional gangsters. They would scare people. Asking too many questions will sue you or come after you. Pretty much similar to what you see today. Mm, Let's say with the voting machines. But that's another story. Bullying one-on-one. Ask too many questions and we'll drag you into court and you ain't got two nickels to rub together and then we'll sue you for three nickels the company one company in China we won't mention but one company because it no longer exists but they were pouring in money and all of a sudden from one minute to the next in the blink of an eye Faster than a speed.
speeding train. No, this ain't Superman. Could leap tall buildings in a single bound. They transferred $113 million into banks that transferred that into Chinese banks and everything disappeared. Poof. All gone. People's life savings, hedge fund money that they had invested in, and public pension that were waiting for the big payoff. What? What happened? Exactly. Eventually, $14 billion, that's where the B would be taken for public pension. They'd be gone. There's The money is totally gone, not traceable. There is no crime. You know how you call the police sometimes and it's a, maybe a dispute over rent or something? And the cops will tell you, there's nothing we can do. It's not a criminal. This is a civil matter. Same thing here. The long run of it, the federal authorities that could that are there to protect stockholders and everything in this country could only go so far and then dummy up. You see, the Chinese government had greased so many palms, it was embarrassing for all these people to stand up and actually say that they knew anything about this. The theft was outrageous. And today... Democratic governors around the, the, the country are asking for federal dollars to pull these public pensions back into a financial sh- physical shape because they've been ruined and plundered by pirates. And the sad part is all these government officials asking for the handouts know exactly where the money is. It's in China. But it's better just to get the taxpayer to pay for all this and then we'll just play stupid and we'll go, we don't know what happened. You know, Americans got to think twice before they invest in foreign companies. Shame on them. That's it. And everybody that got robbed will sit there and go, am I going to get my money back? And they'll go on to the next story. That's it. So they're trying to get you, you that are listening, the taxpayer, to pay for the Chinese robbery. Cover it up. Chinese really don't care because, remember, it's not against the law in their country to rob them foreign company. You didn't rob a Chinese company. We don't care. And they ain't going to investigate anything either. They don't give a hoot. Now with that same, just think about this. $14 billion out of public pension plans. And that money has disappeared into the abyss of these phony 400 Chinese companies. Today, there's about a little bit less than 200 left. And phony senators have tried to stop it. We're we're presenting a bill to make this go away. They do nothing. Now, President Trump will call the Democrats to do nothing Democrats, but the Republicans ain't too far behind. You see, they're swamp rats on the left and the right. And don't fool yourself, people. The $14 billion out of public pension funds that were robbed by the Chinese and the other millions and billions of dollars that came out of people's savings plans. Chinese greased a lot of palms in America to play stupid. There's a lot of people got envelopes. So there is nobody looking into anything. 
And the scary part is that there are rumors, I'll say, that the hologram in the basement, Joe, might have some connections to these hooligans in China. See, the biggest threat to the United States today is China because they operate like a bunch of thugs. You see, the Chinese god is money. Nothing else. Pure greed. And with the billions and trillions that they make, they corrupt the world. So every country, one way or another, has a dependency on them. They've been doing it for many, many years. And if anybody is stupid and foolish enough to think, well, our government never knew about this, you need to seek mental help immediately. Because they did. They just chose to look the other way. China has helped foreign countries build roads, trains, whatever they need. And the reason China is so quick in building all these things for these foreign countries is because they don't they know they don't have a pot to piss in. And the mortgage from what they're building, let's say it's a a train, a high speed train or something. They know they can't pay it. They're going to default on it. Once they default on it, China owns them. And they're doing it country after country, region after region. If you look at the, the Panama Canal, that one of our joyous and geniuses, presidents, Jimmy Carter, took the Panama Canal and he returned it back to their rightful owners, which proceeded to sell it in freaking auctions left and right, and Chinese money brought everything. And Chinese influence over the Panama Canal is huge. That's only one example. So imagine trying to move freight from one side of the world to the other and the Chinese government now blocks you or stops you. And they've these reports that we have that they've infiltrated thousands of companies and embassies in England and Australia and America. We're not that stupid. No, folks, we're not. It's that our politicians are that greedy. We're sinking slow. The ship is taking on a lot of water. And from afar, as you're drowning, our politicians are safe on luxury yachts, counting money, living the high life, and soon to get rid of 45. Wait till that man has to leave. How they will turn on every American. You haven't seen evil yet, but it's coming. Brace yourselves. Up next, Sea Legs on our Buccaneer series. We're going to talk about people that know what they're doing. Episode 176 in our Tactical Thursday Edition, the CZ Evo 3 Scorpion Pistol. As always, it is my honor and pleasure to be your host on Raider Cop Podcast. Continue to pray for each other because without you and without me in this game, we don't have anything. Continue to pray for your family, for your community for the law enforcement agencies that serve you, even the federal ones, and continue to pray for the United States of America. This is Alpha Mike, and I'm out.